What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at this piece right here. This is the KWC CO2 powered mini Uzi. Um, now right off the bat, you don't really see very many Uzis on the airsoft market today. Uh, I don't really know why because it's a very iconic weapon in real steel. Uh, but it's also a really cool weapon just in general. I mean, I personally love the look of this gun. Uh, that's my bias right off the bat. But yeah, you just don't really see a lot of Uzis on the market, and I think that's what deters so many people from not buying this gun. Uh, this is a CO2 blowback powered gun. Uh, it's made by KWC. We've looked at uh, some of their CO2 products in the past. And um, it's, it's definitely uh, a good piece. The performance is good on it. And uh, the overall build construction is pretty nice in my opinion. Uh, but let's hop right into this uh, review. Alright, so we'll kick things off like normal. We'll start from the back to the front. First off, looking at this stock. Uh, it is a side folding uh, wire stock, if you may call it. Uh, it's made out of metal, but it is not steel, like you can see. Um, the actual pin that holds it in place, the pin that goes down in between the gun and the stock, is steel. You can see there. Um, and to fold it to the side, you simply just have to push it over and it'll fold up next to the gun and lock into place relatively well, although there is nothing that actually locks it into place. Um, it does hold very well. Now to unlock it again, you just have to uh, rip it from the folding position outward. Uh, when it is out, uh, it is pretty sturdy. There's not too much wobble. Alright, so here's the left side of the KWC Mini Uzi. I know this is where the most of the firing controls are actually at. You have your selector switch here. Uh, this gun's capable of going fully automatic in the A position all the way forward uh, to semi-automatic. And the middle position, which is R, and then safety all the way back, which is S. Now the selector switch clicks into place very well, so you won't have to worry about it, you know, switching off safety or your fire mode that you've selected. It also has a back beaver tail safety, sort of like a 1911, so you won't be able to fire the gun if it's off safety. You won't be able to fire the gun if that back beaver tail safety is not pressed in all the way. So that's a pretty nice feature that it actually works. Uh, now the grips down here are made of plastic along with the majority of the main body, uh, but all the uh, bolts and screws are made of metal. Uh, actually, I think they're made of steel. Yep, they're actually made of steel, so that's a nice touch. The magazine release is located on the left side as well. You just press that in to release your magazine. I actually like this magazine. Uh, it allows for quick magazine changes with one hand really swiftly, so that's pretty nice. Now, the top cover here uh, is metal, but again, not made of steel. The actual uh, uh, moving piece that this bolt rides on is steel, uh, but the bolt is not steel, just the plate on top. Uh, but this top cover is indeed metal, it adds some weight to it. You can remove the top cover by pushing in this uh, button, I'll get a close up of that later, but you can remove it and access the insides of that by doing that. Uh, and the front little hand guards here, they are ribbed and uh, they are made of plastic. You also have a front sling mount on the left side and uh, the front side up here which is adjustable for elevation. Uh, so that covers the majority of the left side, let's move on to the right side. So on the left side there's not too many controls, it's just uh, the external works of the gun. You will see the ejection port here, um, and if you see, if I pull the bolt back, it does actually lock into place because the magazine is inserted and there are no rounds. It will lock into place. Um, and the only way this will go forward is if the magazine is ejected. Uh, there's no bolt release or anything like that. Now, unlike the real Uzi, this runs off a closed bolt system, so when you are firing it, it'll work more like a traditional gun where the bolt will open and close, ready to work. A real Uzi shoots in an open bolt, so the chamber is open, uh, sort of like that, more of the time. But uh, it's the same plastic body, uh, you can see the metal rivets here in the bolts, uh, and then the grip and such. Uh, let's move on to the front end of the rifle. So here's the front end of the Uzi. Uh, as you can see, the barrel is pretty short, and it does have these slit-out uh, things on the barrel. I think that gives it a really cool look. The outer barrel is metal, uh, and it actually is steel, which is kind of a nice feature. Uh, the locking nut is slightly magnetic, which is another nice feature. Uh, and then this actual nut right here is uh, the hop-up adjustment. If you loosen it, it'll turn the hop-up more off, and then when you tighten it closer to the gun, it'll turn the hop-up on. Uh, this gun has a very effective hop-up unit. Um, with .2s and .25s, you can hit a target from a good distance away. It's, I was actually surprised on 
how good of range this weapon had. Uh, and then you can see here, this is the front little swivel uh, mount. If you loosen this nut all the way, and I'll show you in the disassembly video, you can actually take this off along with the outer barrel, and then you can remove this pin if you want to. Uh, but we'll get into that in the breakdown of the video. Alright, so here's the magazine out of the KWC Mini Uzi. It is pretty hefty. It holds 36 rounds. Uh, it's not made out of steel. It's just made out of some sort of alloy. Uh, but it is pretty hefty, like I said. Now, it is run off of CO2 in the bottom. All you need is a flathead screwdriver. You'll be able to unscrew that and insert your standard 12 gram CO2 capsule. Uh, now, before you do that, I would highly recommend that you uh, use a bit of high viscosity silicone oil like this. Not the spray silicone oil, but some of this. Uh, that'll not only lube the uh, magazine valves and o-rings, but it'll also lube the inside of your gun, which is a great plus because then you don't have to worry about it breaking so easily. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to break down the KWC Mini Uzi. Uh, it's relatively simple. When I first looked at this gun, I thought it would be a lot more complicated than it was. Uh, but it's basically just removing this uh, top cover where the bolt rides. All you have to do to do that is in front of the back sight, you have a little lever. Push that uh, back towards the sight, and then you can lift up the top cover and it'll come free. And then basically these are your internal uh, bolt and spring guide components. Um, all you have to do to remove this is you want to pull back on the actual bolt, and once you've pulled it back far enough, you just want to slightly lift upward and let it come forward. If you don't get it the first time, you pull it back again, and you'll eventually uh, get it to come free. Now, if we're lucky, we'll be able to get everything to come out at once. So here's the bolt. A metal piece, I'll explain this in a second. And then this is your uh, combination spring guide uh, and trigger sear. And then inside here you can see it focuses, you can see the inner barrel, hop up, uh, and trigger mechanism. So first off, let's talk about the bolt. As you can see here, this is the piece that goes back and forth inside the main receiver. Underneath, it's a uh, pretty standard, you know, uh, standard nozzle. I'm not sure if it will be compatible with any other gun, but it's there, it works. It does have a, uh, let's see if I can get it to show, it does have a nice little, uh, piece inside so I'm not really sure what those do but it's there uh, but it doesn't operate uh, the return it doesn't operate from a spring like most traditional uh, gas mechanisms do if you can see that small white rod right there that piece is actually what causes uh, the bolt or the uh, nozzle to go back so the nozzle pushes up on that little pole and then it, it eventually pushes it back it's not too much of a reliable system, but then again, this gun can mag dump 32, 36 rounds relatively easily, so I'm not complaining on the design. Uh, but overall, the nozzle is pretty beefy, and you shouldn't have too many problems with this piece. Now, for those of you who do own this gun, you're probably wondering why this piece is in two pieces. Now, originally, when you get this gun, if you can see here, I'll try to zoom in for you. If you can see right here, this piece was originally attached right there. Uh, but as you can see, it's broken, and the gun still functions fine. Uh, all this piece does right here is it rides up between the, outs the inside of the uh, outer body and then the bolt, so it pretty much just stays there and the gun still works flawlessly. I'm actually surprised myself. Uh, you can buy replacement pieces though for six dollars direct from the manufacturer. Now a pro um, where the majority of the problems happen with this gun uh, are indeed in the uh, spring guide and such, mainly with this piece I'm holding right here. Now this is the combination spring cap uh, trigger sear. Now the stock one of these is made out of a, a crappy cast material and usually what happens is if you can see the lip on the end of the uh, cap here that's the piece that actually rides back and will catch the uh, sear and then when the trigger is pulled it's released and that's what shoots it forward now 
I've heard a lot of reports of that piece breaking on the stock one, but this piece is the upgraded, uh, if I can find my magnet here, this is an upgraded garter steel one. So it's only about a $12 part, you can find them on some websites, and uh, it just basically fixed that problem right there. I've heard this problem happening to a bunch of people that actually buy the gun, so it's, you know, if you buy this piece, which is only $12, it'll completely fix your gun's issues, and you really won't have to worry about anything breaking. I've looked over everything, and most of the pieces are beefy enough. I really can't see anything going wrong other than this piece breaking. So my recommendation is if you do buy this gun, buy a piece like this, an upgraded one, so you don't have to worry about it breaking. Um, but yeah, that's basically the internal workings of this gun. I can show you the uh, trigger system here and how the gas is released. Just lift that up, it flies down. It's a pretty weird system if you look at it from a gas blowback pistol perspective, but overall it works and it works pretty well. Alright, so this is the hop up on the uh, KWC Mini Uzi. If you spin it to the right or towards the gun, you'll hear that clicking noise, and that's actually turning the hop up on. Now, if you want to turn the hop up off, you can't just simply turn it to the left. You have to push this knob in and then turn it to the left. The reason they do that is because if you turn this too far to the left, it'll eventually just come off and you can remove your entire uh, outer barrel assembly once you have removed the front swivel sling. It should come out, yep. Yeah. It'll come out revealing your inner barrel here. I'm not sure of the exact length of the inner barrel, um, but you really shouldn't have any issues in replacing it because I found the gun's accuracy to be quite well for such a small inner barrel. But yeah, that's how you install and uninstall and adjust the hop-up. Alright, so now we're going to chronograph the KWC Mini Uzi. We're using 0.2 gram BBs and uh, use CO2 capsule. Seen about 10 rounds. 206. 212, 212, 224, 210, and 237. So we're in the low 200s, mid 250. I'm not complaining at all because I've seen this gun perform and uh, it has an incredible range and a pretty good accuracy. And I'm going to try to get in rounds per minute uh, on this gun. The last time I tried it, it didn't work too well because the gun was kicking around too much, but we can see if we can get one. It has a pretty respectable RPM. 750. 666. And I'm out of ammo. So, you know, 600, 700 rounds per minute. Uh, it does suffer from cooldown a little bit when you are shooting it in full auto. Um, it varies in the rate of fire slightly, but I think it's still cool because you just saw there, it's really loud, and it does kick around a lot, so it's a really fun gun to shoot. But yeah, that was the chronograph test, uh, let's move on to the final conclusion. Alright everyone, so in conclusion, the KWC Mini Uzi, uh, CO2 powered, uh, I really like this gun. It's a real competition gas SMG, when you compare it to the KWM P9, or the KWM P7, or any other gas submachine gun out there, uh, this one has both its, you know, pros and its cons. Uh, a definite pro of this gun is its CO2. Uh, if you're playing in colder FPS environments, you know that green gas doesn't tend to work in those environments. Uh, CO2, though, on the other hand, works very well. It's a lot more reliable, and it also gives a better kick and a little bit better performance. Uh, you can argue that, but that's what it is. Um, and it's just overall more gas efficient, so the CO2 on this gun is a definite plus. Another thing too is it's an Uzi. I mean, you don't see too many yeah, gas blowback Uzis out there, uh, and this one is just a really underestimated gun. You know, for 180 to 200 dollars, you can get this thing. Extra mags are around 40 dollars. Uh, and even if you do play um, with green gas, prefer to play with green gas, you can actually get uh, conversions for the magazine uh, to use green gas. So that's another definite plus. Uh, as for cons, though. Uh, Stock out of the box, it'll run good for a while. 
uh, but with that uh, trigger sear and spring cap uh, issue, uh, it's a good investment to buy a replacement steel one, or if you can find them, uh, just replacement factory ones, so if it does break, you can just replace it. Like I said, they're only about a $12 part. Uh, but overall, the gun has really good performance. Uh, it's got good gas efficiency, it's CO2. Uh, $180 though, I think that's a little bit high for this gun, with extra mags also costing $40. But like I said, it's really one of the only gas blowbacks readily available, or gas blowback Uzis are readily available on the market. Uh, so with that, guys, this has been the review of the KWC CO2-powered Mini Uzi. Stay tuned for more videos.